This Christmas is going to be the hardest Christmas for some people out there in their life. And today I want to speak to you about that and how we can help them. Hi, welcome to the channel. Christmas is getting near and my kids are getting excited. The tree's gone up. I'm going out doing carol series and seeing nativity plays. But for a lot of people out there in the world today, this is going to be one of their hardest Christmases of their life. And I'll tell you why it is. It's because it's what I term it's their first Christmas. And that's not their first Christmas uh, that they'll ever know or their first Christmas that they're kind of aware of, as we, we say with our children. It's their first Christmas because they've received some devastating news some point this year that's changed their life forever. And this news could be anything. They could have lost a loved one. They could have had news about a, a terminal illness. They could have news about their child. They could have lost their job. They could have lost their house. It's, it's something that's completely changed their life forever. And they're going into this as their first Christmas with that news hanging over them, this, this news that has changed their life. And it's this point at Christmas as everybody is celebrating and saying it's a joyous season. And, and it's also a season that they've grown up celebrating that they've grown up enjoying and it's never been any different in their lives except for this year it has changed and it will be completely different so this happened to me when I was 14 years old back in 1991 my dad in the February of that year he had a heart attack and died and it was just devastating it was just out the blue it was just one night and our lives as a family uh, and, and mine as a 14 year old completely changed forever. It was a week before my mum and dad's 25th wedding anniversary and it devastated my mum. The only thing that we could do, because my dad was Mr. Christmas and we had such amazing Christmases and I hold on to those and it's really important to hold on to those. Uh, that they don't become a negative or something that's hurtful when I think about them or painful, but something that I just uh, thank God that I had those moments. Uh, with my family and and you know those can't be taken away but that Christmas that first Christmas of December 91 and the new year we couldn't stay at home more my mum uh, she was so devastated we went away um, I think we went to the Canary Islands for holiday we just had to get away and it seems so strange being away for Christmas um, in a hot country but that's what we needed that's we needed something completely different to what we were used to because the the pain that we would have felt uh, not having my dad around was going to be too much and a lot of people out there at the moment and they're facing this as they travel up to Christmas so what can we do as Christians and this is this is about mission or living this is coming alongside you know I was just researching passages saying, you know, when Jesus came alongside people, what was he saying? What was he doing? And the word that kept coming and coming and coming up was compassion. And Jesus was compassionate. And that's what we need to be. You know, <laughs> there is a great hope of Christ coming. There's a great hope of Christ's second coming. There's a great hope in the good news that we have. It's not the right time to go out and, and start evangelizing. This is just about being this is just about walking alongside those in their first Christmas, in their pain, comforting and showing compassion and loving them. It might even be a sacrifice for us. It might be that uh, we feel that we should or God is telling us to give up our Christmas day to go and be alongside those who are so hurting in their first Christmas that they can't face celebrating Christmas. And it might be that we just spend the day just sitting with them and serving them and loving them. And that's what we're called to do. You know, we are celebrating the birth of Christ and Christ lived his life showing us an example. And if we have to sacrifice a Christmas for our families, and this includes me as well, so don't think that I'm just telling you this and that I won't do it, that um, we need to do that. We need to go alongside and, and show people that love that Christ has shown the world and that he's taught us, that we're going to be with them in this time of utter despair and it might not even be Christmas Day it might be that walk up to Christmas or over New Year's but we need to 
those people that we know, those people that we love, those people either in our family or our friends or people, maybe even acquaintances, that we need to offer that hand of friendship and of love this, this season because they're going to be hurting. And through showing the love of Christ as he's loved us and we understand that, we really need to reach out to those people and be with them in this time of utter need and despair because I remember that first Christmas and I remember dreading it. I remember the coming up to Christmas thinking, how are we ever going to get through? And it was only by traveling uh, thousands of miles away that we could. And it was still hard. It was still really, really hard. And, and we walked it ourselves and it was hard. And I remember it. Uh, I don't remember many Christmases after that, but I remember that first Christmas. So this is missional living. It's sacrificial living. It's uh, incarnational living. It's showing the love of Christ and being Christ-like to those in a world that is hurting in such a joyous time. So look around now in your lives to those who might be hurting that you feel you could help or even just pray for. Just pray over this time for them and constantly keep them in your prayers. This is missional living, but in a very different dimension to what we think. But I tell you what, going into people's lives, as I do in my role as a, a, a vicar, uh, especially during bereavement when I go for funeral visits, um, and, and sharing that pain and, and, and walking alongside them, it, it's such a privilege, it's such a privileged position to be in at that moment and to actually share in that pain. And each visit is so different. Uh, some that it could be quite uh, joyful to speaking about the, uh, the person who's died's life. Some can be really painful. And some, I, there are just no words. There's just about being and comforting and letting them know that I've experienced what they're going through. And there are sometimes no words that can be said, but only a loving presence, let them know that you're there for them. And that's what people need. The gospel is shown in your actions and your love and your compassion because that's what Christ has shown us and he is with us in those times. So he'll be guiding us and helping us to understand what to do, when to speak, when not to speak. So this Christmas, even if it is a sacrifice to you, I ask you as disciples of Christ and, and, and especially being more intentional about your discipleship to reach out to those on their first Christmas, no matter what it might be and no matter how painful or difficult it might be for you, it's going to be so much worse for them and they will appreciate your love and compassion um, and understanding and just being there this Christmas and it will help them and hopefully and this is what you pray for that they will ask you why you did that and in the future when the time is right you can say exactly why and you know by showing this you know and and hopefully um they'll see Christ's love and, and they'll come to faith. They will be the first ones to go and do exactly what you did for other people. And that's amazing. You know, that's creating a movement, a movement of compassion and love to those who need it at a time. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please be with all those who are going through that first Christmas who need your comfort and compassion. I pray that to those who are watching this video that you will put on their heart somebody to reach out to and as they reach out to them, help them to understand what to say or what to do in sometimes really difficult circumstances 
place on our hearts your compassion that you showed for those around you at that time and, and especially your heart of compassion and love. Help us to love those in need. Help us to get over anything that might stop us reaching out to people and be with us in those moments. Send your spirit of peace and healing. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.